Hi, this is uh, Jeff Hamrick at the University of San Francisco's uh, Master of Science in Financial Analysis program. I'm going to talk for a couple of minutes about creating uh, time indices in Stata. What I've got here in Stata is kind of it's kind of irrelevant. It's, you can more or less view it as being uh, a time series with, with random numbers in it. I just want to focus on creating uh, time indices to associate with this column of uh, random numbers. Here's one way that we've already learned how to do so. Suppose I want to create a uh, variable called time1 and I define it to be equal to underscore n. That's kind of a natural time index to use. Uh, that's often what we're going to want to use. All that does is it creates an integer time x that calls the first observation in the data set observation number one, the second observation observation number two, and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, It might not be the case that those observations are, are naturally indexed with arbitrary integers beginning at 1. Uh, that, that's fine a lot of the time, particularly if they're equally spaced, but you may not want to proceed exactly in this fashion. Suppose that you want to create uh, an annual index such that the first year uh, that we observe is 1947. So you would use a command like this instead. You would use generate time 2 underscore uh, equals underscore, uh, sorry, equals 1947 plus underscore n minus 1. And what that's going to do is, uh, is it's going to define the first observation to be associated with the year 1947. It's not 1948 uh, because we use that underscore n minus 1. Had we used underscore n minus 1, because this is observation number 1, we would have ended up with 1947 plus 1 or 1948. So by using n minus 1, we, we evade that particular problem. So recall with me that we uh, can define, we can now declare the, uh, the data set to be a time series data set by using the command ts set in Stata. And we have to declare which variable is the time variable. And we could just do that with time two. But what I want to make you aware of now is that Stata will allow you to indicate to it internally that you're working with a yearly set of data uh, using that time two time index. So if we execute this command now, it's telling us that the change from one moment in time to the next is one year, and that our data set deals with the years from 1947 to 1992. Okay, so let's imagine now that, that uh, I'm going to clear all of that information. Let me re-import the file to work with again. You can only do a declaration once of a time series uh, variable. You can't then do the ts set command again somehow with some other uh, set of data. So imagine that I am working now not with yearly data, but that I'm working with quarterly data. So I could create a variable that I'll call uh, time3. And here's how time3 is going to work. Uh, it's going to be equal to a time quarter. And it will start in, let's say, the third quarter of 1947. And we'll create it. We'll, we'll create the whole column of time, uh, time markers using once again the same type of notation. We'll use this plus n minus one. But now the first, uh, the first uh, observation in the data set will be uh, 1947, the third quarter. Okay. So uh, let's let's check this out and see how it looks. We browse. We can see what we've created. And notice that we've created something that's a little bit different than what we might expect. I didn't expect to see minus 50, minus 49, minus 48 there, and so on and so forth. And the reason for that is that Stata normalizes dates. Okay, So internally in Stata, as is the case with many computer environments or software programming packages, uh, the 1st of January 1960 is regarded kind of as time zero. So that means that time zero under a quarter system is the first quarter of 1960. And therefore, column, this column time three is not formatted in the way that we might expect. To make it formatted in the way that we might expect, what you need to do is use the format command. So if I do format and I say time three, and I use this option percent TQ, I'll convert the formatting of that column to what we kind of expected to see given this formula right here. Okay, now we see 1947 quarter three, 1947 quarter four, and so on and so forth. So uh, you can now declare that to be a time set variable by doing time set uh, TS set time three. And I think, let's check this right now, I've forgotten, it will accept 
the quarterly designation uh, as part of your input for the TS set command, okay? And it understands that these are equally spaced observations that are one quarter, one calendar quarter apart. There are many other ways to do this in SATA. For example, with a month monthly index, uh, TM, uh, with a weekly index, TW, or with a daily index, uh, T -day, uh, TD. Okay, let me do just one more example. I won't run through all possible examples. Let me import that data set one more time. Okay, here it is. Uh, suppose I want to create a day-by-day -day index such that the first day is equal to the 18th of April, 1962. So what I'll do is I'll use generate and create a fourth time variable called time four. The formula for creating those time indices, this time index, will be TD, and we're going to start on the 18th of April. You use the three-digit abbreviation uh, for the months. Uh, those are standardized, so there's no ambiguity. And we'll have this be in the year 1962. I'll increment up, of course, day by day. And so that I make sure that my first day is actually the 18th of April, 1962, I'll use the N minus 1. So I execute that. And once again, because of the way that uh, days are stored in Stata, we're not getting April the 18th, 1962 here. We're getting day 838. And what day 1838 really is, is it's the 838th day after January the 1st, 1962. So we can reformat that by using the format command. I'm going to say format uh, the variable time four using uh, the day formatting, that is percent TD. The formatting processes, and now when we browse, we get the, the day kind of indicators that we expect to see in this data. And once again, I can declare that this uh, data set now to be a time series data set by using a command like this one. Okay? Uh, now, why, why do we care about any of this? What's the point of doing this? For a lot of time series analysis, it does not matter if we use equally spaced integer values for the time index or if we bother to communicate to Stata that we're dealing with years or months or quarters or whatever. Uh, one way that it matters is if uh, we want the plots, the x-axes, where the time variable will be roaming, if we want those, those time series plots to display those time variables. So that's one reason why we care about this. The other reason will be is that we'll sometimes work with data sets that do not have equally spaced observations. And I'll do, I'll do an example of that in another state of video. But think, for example, about closing stock prices. You know, those are not equally spaced observations. There's nothing that happens on financial, equity financial markets on Saturdays and Sundays. So we really have five days of trading activity followed by two empty days followed by, in general, another five days of trading activity. So we might really want to peg each of those to the exact date on which we supposedly observed that stock price and not pretend like those things are equally spaced. So this is another reason why we need to be a little bit more careful with uh, time series data in Stata.